Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'll be looking at another scraper project and this time I'm going to focus on pagination, how to deal with pagination. And uh, yeah, I hope this one is going to be useful for you. And I'll put, be putting the code in the description once again. Alright, so on my screen right now you can see I have already written some code. This is my uh, project so far and the first thing I want to do is just to quickly explain what's going on but before doing that I just want to show you the site that we'll be scripting today uh, this one uh, we're going to continue with um, with these uh, food sites and uh, this time it's going to be this one my fitness pal and uh, on this side we have some pagination, very, uh, yeah, very normal pagination maybe, or very regular one, where we can, yeah, select a page here and then it's gonna make another request. Okay, so we need to figure out how we can actually scrape five pages, for example, or ten, however many we want. Okay. But uh, let's jump back into the code and just have a quick um, talk of what's actually going on in here. So if you watched my last video, we are doing a very, very similar thing here. Um, we are defining our browser and then inside our main function, we are calling uh, this function that I called scrape restaurant, where you can put in your search term here. And uh, the default one is going to be McDonald's, just for this one. Okay, and the first thing we want to do is we want to encode our search term uh, UI URI encoded, so uh, it uh, is probably properly displayed up here. Okay, and then we just go to the site and then we call a page.evaluate here where we could do a bunch of uh, code has to grab all the things and the things that I'm interested in is the title I'm going to do a selection on the restaurant here. So this part and uh, Since I also will have the unit here on one side uh, Down here. I'm going to separate that um, by using a index of on the first comma and Then figure out what is the restaurant what is the amount and uh, all the nutrition information uh, I'm gonna be grabbing that here using a dot split on this funny symbol here and um, yeah that's basically it it's, it's pretty straightforward um, now let's try to just uh, run this one to run it I can call um, yarn start and that's because inside my package JSON file I do have a script I'm gonna show it in a second all right, so here we have all the all the food here. Uh, follow the first page. It looks cool. Let's quickly go into package JSON and see that this last script here is basically me calling CS node on the index yes. So yeah, uh, pretty simple. All right, but yeah, we get all the information here for the first page. Now we're gonna try to figure out how to do the pagination part. Okay. And that's basically what this video is about. So uh, I'm gonna type them here, okay? So um, here we have the logic for grabbing a page. Now, if you want to do multiple pages, we need to wrap this inside a loop. That is pretty logical, right? So in here, I can do make a for loop. Uh, I'm just gonna make a very regular one here. So uh, I say i is equal to zero. And as long as i is less than, let's just say five, we're gonna increment that one by one. So let's jump down here and wrap it. And uh, yeah, with this code, we're just gonna uh, scrape page one five times. But we are actually interested in moving on. So let's implement the logic here. Okay. All right, so this is gonna be after this part. Let me 
be, let's see, yeah, it's gonna be here. So this is our pagination part. All right. So how are we gonna go about this one? So first we need to click on that next button. And uh, to do that, we can just call good old page.evaluate. And here we can just select our uh, button and I'm just going to put in the selector here it's a little pretty straightforward so it's going to be an anchor tag that has a title next page and this one is gonna yeah basically select that and then click and I can call click on it right away okay that is looking uh, that's looking fine now I'm getting a warning here all right so I jumped ahead a little bit here and uh, what I've done is basically just set the type here because TypeScript has no idea of knowing that I'm actually selecting an uh, anchor tag here so uh, after adding that uh, uh, we're good so if you run the code again we shouldn't get an error this time But uh, we do get something else here, and that's a bunch of empty ones here. As you can see, we are loading in the first page, but the remaining pages are empty. What's going on? And uh, there's a very good explanation here. So uh, after we click here, we, um, we don't have any breaks, right? So when this one runs the second time, the third time, the fourth time, and the fifth time, we might actually be loading in new content. So we actually need to tell our page to wait a little bit. And for that, we can do page a way, wait for, and then put in, let's say 2000, for example. Let's try to run it again. see it's a lot slower right now because we are delaying the execution by 2000 every time we click and uh, if we scroll up here it seems like all these items look pretty unique so actually I believe we were already done but uh, this part is not very good uh, so I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more this is a little bit unreliable so to speak because Mm, it might take longer than 2000 seconds and also the performance is not very good that we have to wait for this long okay so that there are some other things we can do and also as you saw in the beginning uh, this word that, that wait for is actually getting deprecated so um, if you want to use this approach you should use a uh, wait for uh, timeout I believe or uh, wait wait timeout something like that it's not included in the latest types all the types that i'm using so i'm just going to use wait for just to stay in line with typescript okay but uh, anywho if you want to do it a little different and that's what i would do uh, instead of doing a wait for and then put in 10 seconds you can do another wait for and this one is called wait for response or wait for request. In our case, we want to wait for response. And the reason for that is when we click next, we're expecting that be a response after a in API is called, right? And that's when that response comes, uh, we can move on. Okay. But if we want to look for a specific response, because obviously we're loading in uh, some other stuff in the background uh, or usually there's more stuff going on so in here we could do a check like um, uh, uh, actually 
information it's gonna do a return directly here so I'm gonna check mm, this response URL um, does it include uh, a page equal and then the current page number that we add so the current page number is going to be um, since we are starting at zero here it's actually going to be i plus two so page number is going to be i plus two we'll put it in here so if uh, if we get a response that has this one we know that hey we just load in the new data we can move on and how i figured that out is basically i just went over here open up the network tab and uh, when i click on page two i can see that we're indeed getting a response here um, from this address uh, that has this uh, page two and as I said, we're also getting some other stuff here, but that's not what we're interested interested in. So we need to do this this check in here to make sure that we're actually waiting for the right thing. Now let's try to save this and then run it again. All right, so there goes all our results, and once again. Again, you can see it's looking okay, but in here we're actually getting a little bit of some empty ones, and uh, that's a little interesting. Why do you think that is the case? Now, I'm going to tell you why that's the case, and the reason for this is because we're waiting for this response to come in, but and it is working here, right? But not every time uh, the DOM has actually rendered it after the request landed. So if we did a, uh, a wait page wait for, let's just say maybe 200 milliseconds or something, just something very, very small and we run it again. you would see that all the results here filled out because now we're actually waiting for the browser to render all our items. But uh, once again, we're using this wait for, it's not super clean and uh, it can get a little error prone. Um, so uh, I want to show you another approach and that is uh, the await page wait for selector okay and here I can type in a selector um, that I would expect to see in the DOM before moving on and uh, in this case I would like to I would actually like to see this item being rendered so if I go to page 4 you can see everything grays out for a moment and that means while it's loading this SVG or this uh, chart here actually uh, it disappears. So I could wait for that, that one to reappear. And uh, I have done a little bit of pre work. So uh, to know exactly what the selected for this one is. And it looks like this. Okay. And uh, it's similar to the selector that I'm using up here to actually grab the list. Um, but here I'm looking for the recharts dot uh, dash surface, which is uh, yeah. For those people familiar, this is a library uh, being used here, and uh, this is a unique uh, selector. So this one would work. All right. Now, uh, how did I actually figure that out? So apart from jumping in here and looking for that class name. Um, you can go ahead and jump to the network tab and then go to slow 3G and then let's say I go to page 6 now I can really see the loading state right it's 
actually not it's actually hanging there for a while and uh, while this one is hanging I can actually uh, freeze the screen and uh, have a look at the CSS to exactly figure out what is the difference of these list items when it's loading and when it's not loading okay I hope that makes a little sense otherwise uh, leave a comment uh, in the down down below yeah okay let me just uh, put this one back to unbind and then jump back to the code so let's try to run it once again with this selector and see how it looks clear it out and then run the arm start so now I'm not using this wait for I'm just using the wait for response and then I'm waiting for this uh, item to appear this SVG recharge surface here and uh, you can see I'm getting a ton of results here and it seems like no empty ones hmm pretty cool actually pretty cool now this solution is actually pretty good I would uh, say this is a nice solution but uh, actually I do not think we need this wait for response part and uh, I'm going to tell you why now so if we delete this and let's uh, let's go a little back here so when we do this click right the second we press click it will fire off uh, the Ajax request or the request to the API meaning the DOM is going to uh, go into the loading state and uh, this selector is going to be enough because uh, after we have clicked we're just going to wait for this one to appear meaning the request uh, this part will um, yeah when it arrives uh, the DOM will disappear so here we're actually doing a little bit of re redundancy uh, because uh, we can just get away using this selector that was not the wor wor that was not the world's best explanation but I hope I know you know what I, I'm saying just to summarize when I click API request goes off immediately and the DOM changes um, so we, we can just wait for the DOM to update then we know that okay now we can move on to the next uh, step where we grab everything from the new page okay but uh, let's just give it one one test to actually see if uh, is, it will work because we didn't actually test it out so let's have a peek yeah and start and there we go looking at all the items it does indeed seem like we are getting unique items and we do not have any empty items here so uh, very cool very cool uh, yeah that, that was pat the patination part and uh, as you saw there's a bunch of ways of going about it but uh, yeah basically try to rely a little more on wait for selector uh, if you can uh, but if you want to do a quick and dirty solution you can also do uh yeah page dot wait for and then put in the amount of milliseconds you want to wait i hope this video was useful i'll post the code in case you guys want to play around with it and uh for some of you the typescript setup might be interesting as well okay that's all i have for today i'll see you in the next one